Rex, Rex the, the king, king of all dinosaurs, dinosaurs. but to but one, one rival, rival he was his prey. Now, now, new science reveals how the most aggressive hunter ever, ever became hunted. hunted. They're the, the Earth's first, first fighters. fighters. The, the ultimate, ultimate predators. predators. New discoveries in forensic science bring to life the prehistoric art of war. This is Jurassic Fight Club. Go back. Way back. 65 million years ago. To a time when the Earth was wild, raw, and mysterious. A place of violent upheaval and extreme change. The, the supercontinent of Laurasia got one life fresher, fresher, forming, forming the, lands the lands that then would inhabit millions of years into the future. future. In what, what we call North America, America an ocean, ocean splits, splits the land mass. Great shifts in the Earth's tectonic, tectonic plates cause the Rocky Mountains to form in the west and the Appalachians to rise in the east. Volcanoes erupt with increased frequency. The world is in turmoil. Where South Dakota is today, volcanic ash carpets the terrain. It's the dry season. The temperature nears 100 degrees. A high oxygen level allows dinosaurs the dominant life form to grow to immense sizes. Among these giants is the largest predator on Earth, Tyrannosaurus rex, and he's about to engage in a colossal fight. Summer, 1998. In the harsh badlands of northwestern South Dakota, a group of amateur paleontologists are conducting a routine dig when they make a stunning discovery. They stumbled upon a prehistoric crime scene. They were immediately able to determine that the remains belonged to a young T-Rex. But this was not just an ordinary skeleton. Many of the bones have been broken and surround the skeleton with strange blade-like teeth. But these teeth were not the teeth of a baby T-Rex. They were the teeth of another unidentified predator. How has this T-Rex died? In 1998, near the town of Belfouche, South Dakota, they found what appeared to be the skeletal remains of a relatively small dinosaur. At first, they weren't sure what they had, but the evidence started to emerge that told them this was a young Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex was a pretty rare dinosaur, but juveniles are almost unheard of, so its discovery was pretty significant. But as workers continued to excavate their remains, they observed something unusual. Ribs, leg, and arm bones, and various vertebrates show signs of injury. The sheer number of broken bones was stunning. Something had happened here. The predator, predator killed, killed this T-Rex. Rex. Ah! The bones indicated a brutal battle scenario. We're paleontologists looking at a battlefield. Tyrannosaurus Rex was the apex predator of its time. So what animal could have taken on and killed this young T-Rex? In the late Cretaceous, T-Rex stood out among all other dinosaurs as one of the deadliest on Earth. They weighed up to seven tons, stood 16 feet tall, and measured 43 feet in length, the size of an 18-wheeler. Its large size made T-Rex look impressive, but modern detective work revealed three unique features that made him a true killing machine. The first was his eyesight. In 2006, Lawrence Whitwood of Ohio University scanned the brain cavity of Tyrannosaurus rex. It's an important piece of the puzzle. We now know that the T Rex had powerful but not vision. From the cascade information, we get a sense of the relative size of particular parts of the brain. The part of the brain associated with vision, optic the part of the brain associated with the sense of smell, or the part of the brain associated with hearing. Like, like ego, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Rex had by not their vision. This gave him the ability to maintain focus on a moving target. In a fight, it had no trouble keeping its opponent within its line of sight. T-Rex almost certainly had a pretty good visual field overlap, meaning it had pretty extensive binocular vision. 
what we, what we see, see in the brain, brain is that indeed the brain, brain is structured to, in a sense, process that visual information. Its second feature was its tremendously powerful jaws. With a bite force of over 3,000 pounds per square inch, it's among the strongest in the animal kingdom. Twice the strength of the great white shark. When we control the teeth and the damage those teeth inflicted were the jaw muscles. And T Rex has expanded the back skull so that it has a lot of musculature so that it has the power to drive those teeth right through the wall. It has this unbelievable power in its jaw separated from all other dinosaurs and all other animals as well. Its third and most dangerous asset was its incredibly massive teeth. No, no other creature, creature before or after has ever had spikes designed like, like these. T-Rex had to use those teeth to punch right through the ball. And so it couldn't have narrow teeth the way the other nervous dinosaurs did. It had to make teeth that were really, really wide. And that would have been incredibly damaging to anything that it had bit. These are pulverized teeth. These can pierce through flesh, they can shatter bone, and then they're anchored by extremely deep roots. They're like any other predatory dinosaurs do. Look, Look at the, the tooth, tooth of any predatory, predatory dinosaur. Allosaurus, Ceratosaurus, even Raptors. You'll find that their teeth are more blade-like and are serrated on front and back. back. Very common. But Look at the tooth of a Tyrannosaurus Rex, and now you're looking at a railroad spike. But those teeth may have held something more than just a massive bite. We now know that they may have been some of the world's first biological weapons. When Whitmer studied the skull, he saw that there were serrated ridges in the teeth. The ridges are remarkably similar to those of another animal with a dead end bite, a Komodo dragon. Another interesting attribute about the teeth of the Tyrannosaurus Rex is that the serrations on the teeth, the fine little ridges, perhaps actually lodged little bits of flesh in the previous meal, and that rotting of that flesh would have produced a great deal of bacteria. What we're talking about here is really bad oral hygiene. Now, in today, we actually have animals, the Komodo dragon, this large, gigantic lizard, that, that actually, actually has what we call a septic, septic bite. bite. That, that, that actually, actually when it bites an animal, animal it in a sense, sense infects, infects it with, with the bacteria, bacteria in its mouth. mouth. Equipped with these weapons, it seems unlikely that any creature would attack a Tyrannosaurus Rex, even one as small as a juvenile. So who had battled this T-Rex? To help answer this question, paleontologists had to get a complete picture of how T-Rex lived. And fought. Step one, study its environment. When we look, look at the Cretaceous environments of this part of the world, it's not all that different than environments, environments that we still have today. When we look, look at the plants, we look at the climate, and so on, we can assume that we were looking at something that looks very similar to what we see in the Gulf states. states. Um, Climate-wise and everything else was. Fossilized, Fossilized plants, plants found near the skeleton, skeleton revealed that the young T-Rex lived in an area near conifer, conifer, pine, and magnolia trees. They also discovered prehistoric ash, which suggests that volcanic activity occurred on a regular basis. But in the investigation, scientists discovered something stunning. Bones of prehistoric crocodiles and fish were found nearby. This suggests that the T-Rex is fighting and washed into a river during flooding. It's evidence of a violent earth that could change without that warning. After studying its environment, step two of the investigation was to study the behavior of Tyrannosaurus rex. Using evidence found in the bones and modern animal behavior, scientists pieced together how these huge dinosaurs hunted, fought, and raised their young. Tyrannosaurus rex was the ultimate aggressor. Uh, there's, there's nothing, nothing that Tyrannosaurus Rex was afraid of, including its biggest, biggest prey, prey Atrocitus, which, which has, has big, big horn with horns, thrill to detect its neck. But there, there were no, no other dinosaurs, dinosaurs around that would, would even give Tyrannosaurus Rex a second thought about uh, its own safety. safety. There's no, no problem whatsoever, I can take, take you down. down. And when, when T-Rex took, took its prey down, down, it was fast and ugly. This is an animal that could probably bite and chew up a bull plank. So, uh, anything, anything they got, got in the way of that, that mouth was in a lot of trouble. trouble. But what they, they really, really do is get those teeth, teeth and plant it, and, and then, then they, they rear back and just pull everything out. Bones and flesh and guts, guts whatever, whatever happens, happens to be there. there. And, and they, they crunch, crunch it up and swallow it. And if you get it in the way of this apparatus, uh, you're not going to last very long. Oh, Tyrannosaurus Rex was a powerful and deadly predator. 
paleontologists now believe that they lived and moved in the past. Over the last decades, three dig sites have suggested that large predators live in family groups' packs. In Alberta, Canada, they found several skeletons of varying sizes from a big meteor called Albertosaurus. In Utah, they found dozens of Allosaurus that had died at the same time in the same place. But the best evidence to support the idea that T-Rex lived in family group was made in Montana. Paleontologists discovered the remains of several individual skeletons that suggest that this was a family of Tyrannosaurus rexes. Experts believe that living in a family pack would ensure the safety of their young. Or very small, it took them nearly a decade before they were big enough to fend for themselves. But T-Rex was small enough to fit it in an egg about the size of a soccer ball. And then, and then spent, spent the next 10 years, years or so relatively small, less than half a ton. Based on the T-Rex traveling, traveling, traveling in packs, the investigation took, took a turn. turn. Experts, Experts had to consider, consider the theory. Is it possible that this juvenile T-Rex was, was, was with the sibling, sibling at the time of the attack? attack? The experts say it is. Based, Based on modern birds, I think the T-Rex had two, maybe three offspring at a time. I think the only time they were ever left alone is when the parents were out hunting. Once the babies grew large enough, they could go on with them. But until they reached that size, they left them behind. This made them pretty vulnerable. Like, like modern, modern predators, predators, the adults would set mark their, their territory. territory. These sets were designed, designed to keep predators of the dinosaurs away. away. We, we also, also know that the only thing the T-Rex would fear was a larger, larger T-Rex. Rex. Is, Is it possible, possible that this juvenile was killed, was killed by a member of its, its own family? family? The two designed Tyrannosaurus Rex is very distinctive and therefore leaves very distinctive marks on the bones. Had this juvenile been attacked and killed by the rest, then we would have no doubt because there would have been a little skeleton remaining. But more importantly, they would have had these huge round holes punched in the bones. In my opinion, a T-Rex did not kill this baby. The powerful jaws and teeth of Tyrannosaurus Rex were capable of cracking any bone. But the lack of bite marks of the juvenile skeleton meant only one thing. Another Tyrannosaurus was not responsible for this attack. But these dinosaurs had few, if any, rivals, and with two protected parents in them, few creatures would dare to attack their young. Protected or not, something that killed this young Tyrannosaur. New evidence would blow this prehistoric mystery wide open and expose the identity of the killer. Buried deep in the ground for millions of years, a scenario of a lethal dinosaur attack begins to unfold in South Dakota. The discovery of a juvenile Tyrannosaurus rex with numerous broken and missing bones. Investigators worked off the theory that the two T-Rexes were in this battle. The fall of the line in the South Dakota badlands demanded that the bones of the juvenile T-Rex be removed and shipped to a lab. Works covered the bones with layers of plaster to ensure their protection during transport. We have to worry about changes in weather, for example. So we have to get the specimens out of the ground as fast as possible back to the laboratory. We'll cover the top with plaster and burlap. Basically, that's just a jacket or some kind of a container to hold everything together. When they opened one of the plastic jackets, experts were given their first close-up look at a vital glue from the crime scene. The attacker's teeth. Closer inspection led to the identity of the suspect. Nano Tyrannus, a small stealthy version of Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nano is one of my favorite dinosaurs. The name actually means pygmy pirate. And it's pretty aptly named because this was a one knee dinosaur. Nano Tyrannus sized dinosaur. Would, in my opinion, opinion, be one of the most fearsome creatures, creatures that ever lived, lived because, because it combines the firepower of T-Rex on, on a smaller, smaller scale with a great, great speed ability. Nana Tyrannus wasn't just one unique dinosaur. dinosaur. It's, it's also, also one, one of the most controversial. controversial. It was originally named for a prehistoric skull found in Montana in 1942. Since then, experts have differed over whether the Nanotyrannus is its own species, or probably just a juvenile T-Rex. One of the very difficult things in all dinosaurology, just because the animals are so rare, is to be able to understand this thing. Is this a new species, or is this just a juvenile species we already have? 
those who believe Nanotyrannus is its own species, cite key differences between it and T-Rex. One is his design. Well, one of the remarkable differences between Nano-T and a full-blown adult T-Rex is the structure of the teeth. Um, Tyrannosaurus rex has these large, sometimes called banana teeth. And they're certainly sharp and pointy and have serrated edges, edges, but they're not really thin, thin like the blade of a knife, rather they're more expanded like a banana. banana. Whereas, Whereas a nano teeth, what we see are teeth, teeth that are indeed, indeed much more knife like. They're, they're much, much flatter, uh, a little, little bit more sharply, sharply turned back or recurved. The kinds of teeth we see in other kinds of predatory dinosaurs. This suggests that while a T Rex would crush bone, Nano Tyrannus would tear through flesh in a slicing action. There's up to 17 teeth in this part of the upper jaw in Nano Tyrannus, and there's only 12 or 13 Tyrannosaurus Rex. Well, that suggests to me that these are different species of events, and that these species are in fact valid. But other paleontologists conclude something different. Almost all, all the evidence, evidence I think, points to it being juvenile, juvenile and, and almost certainly a juvenile T-Rex. However, there, However, there, there is, is some evidence in terms of CAT scans on the inside, inside of the skull, skull and some, and some of the hollow chambers, chambers in that brain case, case that are a little, little peculiar, peculiar in that tyrannosaurus. And, and that's, that's another, another key difference, difference between, between these two predators, predators the shape, shape of their, their brains. CAT scans performed by Dr. Whitmer gave some surprising results. So when we did the CAT scan of T-Rex and Nanotech, it really looked like there were some striking differences. I mean, we could see some of those differences in the brain. Here's the Tyrannosaurus Rex. And when we bring up and look at the brain of Nanotech, we really see that they're quite different. Of course, they're different in size. Nanotech was a smaller animal. But really, some of the differences go beyond size. The size and shape of the brain was not the only difference. Experts would discover that the brain was actually positioned differently as well. The brain of, of, of Nanotyrannus is shaped in a very different way from Tyrannosaurus Rex. T-Rex held the skull kind of like, like this, pretty straight, straight on, where Nanotyrannus actually looked, looked like this. this. And, and you, you cannot, cannot change, because that is very deeply in bone, bone. You're not, not going to change the orientation of semi-circular analysis of the inner ear. ear. So, so clearly, clearly, this was a different, different animal. animal. This discovery proved that Nanotyrannus held the skull in a lower position, making it easier to focus and strike potential enemies. The evidence clearly suggests that Nanotyrannus is its own species because there's enough distinctive differences between it and Tyrannosaurus rex to justify its name, Nanotyrannus. Today, Nanotyrannus is considered its own species. A stealthy, aggressive predator who could hunt down and kill juvenile T-Rex. It stood seven and a half feet tall, 17 feet long, and weighed about a ton, approximately half the overall size and up to a sixth the weight of T-Rex. But what Nano T lacked in stature, it gave in speed. Nano Tyrannus has much longer, more slender legs than Tyrannosaurus Rex. That means this is an active running dinosaur. Even though Tyrannosaurus Rex can run, he's not really designed to run all the time. Nano Tyrannus is more like a cheetah on steroids. These animals were really, really fast. They could outrun a Tyrannosaurus Rex, no problem. And then that also helped them when they're running down the prey so they could surround something and run to death. Nanotyrannus was large enough to take on this juvenile T-Rex, and certainly it certainly gave it well run its parents. But the bones had been broken. No bite marks were found on them. Did this mean that the Nanotyrannus had actually killed the juvenile T-Rex? As a smaller animal, Nanotyrannus would not have the same kind of bite force that the big Tyrannosaurus would have. Its jaws were relatively longer and more long and had more teeth. That suggests that it really never did develop the same kind of power that the Tyrannosaurus did pound for pound. Nanotyrannus would be a little more careful where it bit because it wouldn't have this great bone-breaking quality that a full-size Rex would have. That is why no bite marks were found on the bones of the juvenile T-Rex. Nanotyrannus did not have the jaw muscles or tooth design for penetrating bone. Then, another, another hard, hard look at the evidence, evidence would bring investigators closer to the answer. When I saw the Nanotyrannus Rex, I thought it was going to be a little bit more than the juvenile skeleton. I had a pretty good idea of what would happen. But, but since, since no bite marks were found, found on the bones, it's hard to say with any real certainty that the Nanotyrannus had actually killed the baby. But then, then I took a second look at the teeth, and I realized that these were 
were shed teeth. That, that means, means these, these teeth that were broken, broken off during the act of feeding. This, this means, means that, that Nanoterranus has broken his teeth while, while attacking the Spade Terrestrial Stress. The teeth that were found near the T-Rex had been shed. But were the teeth broken during that? Or could the Nanoterranus have simply found the dead T-Rex and lost the scavenging his remains? The prehistoric crime scene held the answers. It's estimated that between 75 and maybe 90 percent of the baby Tyrannosaurus Rex found. If the Nano Tyrannus had been scavenging it for food, then we would expect that the majority of the bones would have been gone, or at least the skeletons would have been torn up in this particular. But the fact that so much of the skeleton remained, and that the pieces were found in relative proximity to each other, tells me that Nano Tyrannus was biting baby T Rex, but not eating it. So one, so one question, question remained. Why, why would Anatoranus risk its life to attack a Juju of T-Rex, but not, not eat it? Competition between predators has existed from the beginning of time. Being able to outcompete your opponent is a way to ensure your survival. Being faster, smarter, or stronger gives you a competitive edge, but in the case of Anatoranus, he could never compete with an adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. It has no chance of killing an adult, so killing a baby is what it needed to do to survive. Why, Why did he eat it? It's a mystery. Perhaps, Perhaps it was buried very, very quickly after death, death and the nano just, just didn't have time to eat it. it. Or maybe, maybe something interrupted him before he could take advantage of that potential meal. The running course of the Jujul Tyrannosaurus Rex lay buried beneath mud carried in from some prehistoric river. Investigators were working on the theory that two T-Rexes were in a battle. One was taken down, down by the Nanotrotranus. And then it's a battle, and its attacker remained hidden, hidden for 65 million years. This prehistoric crime, crime scene would bring to life an epic battle between T Rex and the T Rex Hunter. Tyrannosaurus Rex was the most feared dinosaur in North America. Only one creature would dare enter its domain. Nano Tyrannus. The battle lines are drawn in this life and death struggle as Nano Tyrannus tracks down and attempts to kill a juvenile T Rex. With a huge knowledge of Nano Tyrannus and Tyrannosaurus Rex, experts began to piece together how this dinosaur battle may have actually been fought. Although the T Rex is a juvenile, it would still have powerful muscles and tremendous strength. But would that, that be enough, enough to defend itself from an adult nanotyrannus? When you have a nanotyrannus and a baby T Rex together, dealing with an animal of base, we are well adapted in, in the same ways. ways. Even though they're the same size, Tyrannosaurus Rex is going to grow up to be a lot bigger big animal. animal. And, and so, so because, because of that, that the, the, the way, way its muscles, muscles are formed, formed, the way its uh, tendons are attached to the bones, bones uh, all of this is a little bit different. They're very, very similar, similar kinds of animals, animals uh, from their, their basic, basic structure. structure. Their strength, strength was, was probably very comparable. Probably, probably the, the difference would most amount to experience. We're talking about a youngster versus, versus an animal that, that, that's, that's been around the block a few times. times. If, if an adult were around, an anti-rex would never dare attack a juvenile rex. The only time a fight would occur would be if the adults were out hunting and left the juvenile alone. Without the protection of an adult, then a juvenile would rely on sheer bulk as a deterrent to being attacked. Even, Even though, though it's, it's not, not an adult, a young Tyrannosaurus Rex is still a power. The long legs of Nanotyrannus may have given it an edge which would came to its speed and agility. But when, when attacked, attacked, the juvenile T-Rex needed more than a match. But well, we can compare uh, uh, Nanotyrannus versus a sub-adult Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rex. So it's about, about the same, same size. They're, They're going to be extraordinarily, extraordinarily similar, similar in terms, terms of their hind limbs, limbs, their tail, and, and their body, body portions. portions. So, so they're, again, going to be very evenly matched when it comes, when it comes to speed and agility. And the Anthrax would have something, something up on the Jujuba Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rex. Uh, not, not only would it be more agile, because his muscle structure is probably a little, little different, different, but also it would have a lot more experience than the Jujuba T-Rex. So it would anticipate and be able to make the move a lot more smoothly and quickly than the Jujuba Tyrannosaurus Rex. Although the adult Nanotyrannus would have been faster and more agile than the juvenile T Rex, the Rex had, had one advantage, and that's family support. support. If the Rex had a sibling, it would change the complexity of the battle very quickly. 
With completely different tooth design, these two dinosaurs may have used them differently. There is no doubt that each were effective weapons, but which would be more deadly in combat? The thin slicing teeth of Nanotyrannus, or the thick crushing teeth of T-Rex? The jaws are a little bit different. That's how we tell these two animals apart. Nanotyrannus has more teeth than the jaws. The teeth are pretty much the same size as the teeth of the baby Tyrannosaurus Rex. Still, the T-Rex would, would probably have had a much harder, harder stronger, stronger bite, bite than the Nanotyrannus. Nanotyrannus teeth are more primitive, primitive in design. design. They're, They're much, much more blade-like, blade -like, very thin. thin. Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex, Rex are almost equal side to side, side, side as they are front to back. back. So this, this means that their feeding habits, habits were different. different. Nanotyrannus, Nanotyrannus would strip carcasses of bones. bones. Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex would, would eat the whole carcass, including the bones. The life of a predator depends on its ability to hunt and kill game, but it also had to defend itself against rivals. Predatory animals have been at war with each other since the beginning of time. We see it today in animals like lions and hyenas. Predators don't tolerate other predators in their same environment because they both compete for the same food source. So any chance they have to kill a rival, they'll take it. An adult, adult nanotyrannus would have certainly taken advantage of an unguarded juvenile because it means getting rid of its competition. Soon, their animals are similarly enough designed and comparable enough to strength that we might expect that the experience of the adult nanotyrannus would actually allow it to win the day over the young tyrannosaurus rex. In terms of fighting skills, of course, course, this, this adult, adult nanotyrannus will have had a lot, lot more experience over its lifetime than this juvenile tyrannosaurus rex. So it may have literally years of experience beyond what this other, other young, young individual would have. In my, in my mind, there is no doubt that nanotyrannus would have been more than a match for a single juvenile tyrannosaurus rex. The real question for me would be, what would happen if a nano killed the rex? Would it eat it, or would it just leave it alone? After spending energy in a fight, I would suspect that the winner would need to recharge his batteries and take advantage of that food source now lying at his feet. Why this nanotyrannus didn't eat the juvenile is a pretty interesting question. Something happened after the fight that prevented it from eating this baby rex. Nanotyrannus would have had advantage over a juvenile T rex, but two juveniles of this nano would have radically changed the dynamic of the fight. By studying the bone fragments from the scene, cat scan, and environmental evidence, and using modern animal behavior as a guide, experts were able to reconstruct a plausible scenario of an epic battle. One that took place in South Dakota 65 million years ago. You are about to see a graphic scenario of a violent prehistoric battle. Fewer discretion is advised. A pair of adult T Rexes are on the hunt. They must leave their babies unguarded. Juveniles are unaware of approaching danger. Leaving their young is a very risky thing. They understand that there's dangers out there. But they've got to leave the young long enough to go out and hunt prey. Traveling in search of prey, the adults could be gone for a long period. The adults, the adults have left a series of set marks. The outline boundaries for the juveniles to stay within, and for all other dinosaurs to keep out. Most dinosaurs are repelled by this punch and set and retreat. But one dinosaur in particular uses these set marks as a homing device. Nanotyrannus actively hunts and kills young tyrannosaurus. Not to eat, but to get rid of the competition. These two unguarded juveniles are at the mercy of this tyrant killer. A nanotyrannus knows he's no match for a fully grown T-Rex. He makes sure the adults are gone before he moves in for a kill. Senses on high alert. The two juvenile tyrannosaurs instinctively know that the predator approaches. 
They're too young to have ever seen an NMS. But it doesn't matter. They're hardwired to recognize a threat and face it head on. The Nano Tyrannus doesn't just haphazardly attack. These, These young, young tyrannosaurs, tyrannosaurus have a special defensive mechanism, a mouthful of bacteria. The nanotyrannosaurus nano knows that a nip from, from a young tyrannosaur could potentially end its life. life. These, These are the first animals, animals to use biological weapons. One, One bite full of that bacteria, and nanotyrannosaurus is dead from a massive infection. If the fight doesn't kill him first, he loses it cautiously, using his height of edge to assert his dominance. He leans in, flashing those serrated teeth. Their kisses is a warning. We're not backing down. The fight's on. The nanoterrestrial hangs back, making mock lunges. It's a little technique. If he can get them out of the nesting area, they have no hope. But the juveniles instinctively stay in the security of the nesting area. They stand shoulder to shoulder facing their attack. Nanoterrestrial circles his rivals, looking for an opportunity. Leaps forward and snaps his jaws and loses his footing. The nano grabs the young tyrannosaurus right behind the net, picks him up and throws him on a rag that crosses the forest floor. Now he's only got one juvenile left. The lone juvenile doesn't stand a chance. The young T-Rex seems panicked. It wants to turn and run, but instincts tell him to stand its ground. It roars as loud as it can. This is basically a cry for help. It, it hopes that mom, mom and dad are near enough to hear The nano tyrannus knows that the young T-Rex has just sounded in it all. He's got to get in this battle, battle and he's got to get, get out of there quick. He leans in and decides to go for a full frontal attack. Nano tyrannus leans in again, waiting to make his lethal lunge. He's using his experience as a veteran fighter to his best advantage. The T-Rex, a rookie warrior, tries to manage his every move. He moves into the, the kill, kill. and then feels a horrible pain in his leg. He looks down, and there's the second juvenile T-Rex. He's recovered from his sling across the forest floor, and he's attacking. He's bit the nano tyrannosaurus on the leg, and if that wound becomes infected, it could end his life. This time, nano tyrannosaurus will make sure that the T-Rex dies. Flexing all the power of his jaws, he clamps down with nearly half a ton of pressure, and crushes his spinal cord. He throws, throws it to the, the ground, ground and using his football, he stalks the baby. Now, now it knows, knows that, that juvenile tyrannosaurus rex is dead. But there's, there's no, no time, time to do it. it. Once he breaks down, down Nana Tyrannus moves in for the final kill. kill. The As he leans down, down to take a bite, bite, he feels, feels the ground begin, begin to vibrate. vibrate. This telltale sign says there's something big and it's nearby. That something big is the adult female T Rex returned from her hunt. When she sees what's happened to Nemesis, all hell will break loose. A pair of adult Tyrannosaurus Rexes have gone on a hunt, leaving their two juveniles unattended. In their masses, a predatory nanoterrestrial has terrorized their offspring, killing one and threatening the other. But now, the ground begins to vibrate. The sound can be heard for miles. It's the adult female T-Rex coming back from her hunt. She hears the very distinctive sound of her young pleading for help. It kicks in an emotion that's only found in female tyrannosaurs. Mess with my baby, you're messing with hell. Driven by her maternal instincts, the female is the first, first to arrive in the scene. The female Tyrannosaurus knows instinctively this is a killer of juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex. She's got to be in action. She doesn't have to worry about sizing this is home. She's three, three times bigger. Big. She, she just needs to kill him. T-Rex is intended to distract Nano Tyrannus from the lone surviving juvenile. Nano sees his giant jaws and sidesteps with his long legs. The female has accomplished the most important thing. Get herself between her remaining juvenile and the killer of baby T-Rex. Now 
now the Nano Tyrannus has a slot option. Try to finish off the remaining Juvenile Tyrannosaurus Rex, or turn around and run. Against, against the strength, strength of a mad Tyrannosaurus Rex. Rex. He, tries he tries to flank. If, if he can move around quickly enough, she cannot respond. He can go in and with his elongated snout, snout, grab the juvenile, juvenile shake it in his mouth, and kill it completely. But that Tyrannosaurus Rex underestimates his opponent. Fueled by raging levels of adrenaline, she spins and turns, avoiding his flanking move. The open, open jaws, jaws of the female, female Tyrannosaurus, Tyrannosaurus Rex. She, she grabs, grabs the Nano Tyrannosaurus Rex and, and using the bite force of a thousand pounds per square inch, she, she crushes, crushes the back, crushes the ribs, ribs and, and ends the life of this attack. attack. But killing the Nano is enough for the Bible Rex. She, she wants to use him as a message to any other Nano Tyrannosaurus that comes into this area. Using the massive claws, she, she rips apart the body of the Nano She turns, she turns her attention, attention to her lone surviving, surviving offspring. offspring. Nano Tourette had no chance to win this fight. He lost because he made two, two fatal mistakes. mistakes. Number one, it, it misjudged the maneuverability of an adult Tourette's Rex. Number two, two, he failed to recognize that the bond between a mother and an offspring is stronger than any weapon it had. T-Rex may have tried to put them to rest in this fight, but in the ultimate battle for survival, they may both lose. The other T-Rex, the cousins of Western North America, they may have even seen the flash of their two, the great explosion in the Yucatan Peninsula of an asteroid and NDA dinosaurs. Of course, the dinosaurs didn't die immediately. The, the big meteors like T-Rex and Nanotyrannus would have actually had a short period of time when they didn't do really well. When the starvation starts to hit the plant eaters, there's a lot of meat available. And the meteors can get there and they can gorge. And then after a while, they're looking around, there's nothing left to eat. It was too bad T-Rex and Nano, they were gone too. Gone, but not forgotten. The mystery of T-Rex and Nanotyrannus never fully known. But while the search for facts continues, this is much is certain. 65 million years ago, giant creatures with supersized weapons transformed prehistoric Earth into a battlefield. And the ultimate contest of speed versus size, size one big.